okay let me share the screen as well okay so today we are going to look at some of the implementation of how to use the java uh, collection framework we are going to uh, see that uh, how we can utilize it and yeah so let's start with the some some of the basics that we can look at okay so so we are going today we are going to look at java collection framework in this session we are going to use or uh, discuss the basically the nine uh, nine things uh, which are mostly used from this java collection framework they are much more it's quite broad but we are going to look at the basics and the one which quietly used, properly used by developers. Okay, so it comes down to uh, so Java collection framework is actually a set of uh, classes and interfaces. Okay, so the higher higher hierarchy would be in a set of interfaces. Uh, keys will be interfaces and the lower implementations would be uh, basically uh, the classes which actually lower hierarchy keys are classes so how it is defined here is we will have a something called collection frame uh, collection interface which is divided into three parts uh, that is that is also a set of interfaces that is set of interfaces in this case it will uh, here it's majorly is list set and queue Okay, now for each interfaces, we will have uh, we will have a set of classes which we are going to use to implement. So these are for list uh, for the list interface, we will have array list, link list, and, and stack. Okay, so for set class, we will have hash set link set and tree set so for from these interfaces there uh, these classes uh, which i am writing right now uh, they are the popular most popularly used from these interfaces and they take the functions present uh, methods present in these interfaces and apply them into their own classes and the last one of the uh, another important uh, collection or interface will be queue which uh, which produce array d queue array d is how it's pronounced link list and priority queue so we're going to look at most of these three three nine uh, three classes for sorry three classes per set that is total nine classes each we're going to see the implementation of that and uh, so let's start with it. So we will first start with the list interface. So in this, we are going to first talk about the array list. Now, the th the, the reason to use this uh, collection framework is basically to understand uh, to produce the implementation work of the developer. Like if you the internal implementation or of the actual uh, data structure that you are creating is already been done by the uh, by the java developers already so you just have to use and create the functions and just you have to implement them you don't have to reinvent the cycle so stop the reinventing the cycle uh, we are using this and we will see that over, over the period like over the period of uh, this session that what are the things that uh, just by adding function we have do a lot of tasks okay so so let's start with it so so uh, before telling that, I will just tell a kind of scenario here. So the scenario will be like, 
for array, specifically for array list. So let's suppose we are creating a, a array and we are giving and giving some size of the size to it and then we are giving some values to it. So let's let me write some of the values here. So it's 29 so quite big so let me say write one so we will have some value for the whole array and something like that and the last uh, and then student name okay till now it will work perfectly fine that we have uh, so consider scenario there is a class and we are taking we are storing the student name of the student so there are 30 students based on that we created a size of array of 30 students now suppose a new student comes and we want to uh, add uh, the, the we have to store the value of that so at that time we can't write this step so let's say run okay so if we try to write it down and if we try to run it okay let me console yeah so it will show out out of bot index okay so in practical scenario if if you predefine a particular uh, size of a data structure it is not feasible so you you need a mechanism here which actually do all this stuff dynamically so you don't have to demand you don't have to define any anything you just say that okay i'm going to add i'm just going to add the name uh, the mm, the system should look out uh, automatically to increase the size of the array in this particularly for this scenario so what what we can do is to uh, to solve this kind of things Either we can write increase the value from 30 to 100 and such we can accommodate it, but it's not it's a kind of manual process and you can't do it every single time, right? And consider big systems where you're thinking that you're going to store lakhs and lakhs of information, you don't know the idea of the what kind the amount of information that it might the, uh, the system might get. So giving a approximate idea uh, uh, some value approximate is not a good idea. So in this case we that's why we have to look for dynamically dynamic dynamic array which can increase its space on the runtime and this this uh, one kind of features that that is provided by array list so the list interface is basically if you have to uh, summarize in one line it is it will uh, take care of the data structures which uh, which has to be stored contiguous in the memory location. So we know that the next element will be a part of the data structure only. So it's a contiguous memory location. That's why just how array has been stored. In uh, similarly, the list interface also provides this mechanism where whatever the data structures are allowed in inside the list interface, they will be contiguous in nature. Okay. So so, so to solve this kind of scenario, so we can start uh, we can start writing. Uh, for the array list. So how we can do it is uh, let me increase the size. Yeah. Okay. So array list string. We have to define the what kind of uh, uh, value it is going to take. So we given the array list the class name, and we are giving the uh, the object name that is student name, and then just like how we create an object, similarly we have to create an interface class. Now, if you can see that the array list has been uh, shown red in line, so basically we have to import the array list so that uh, these collections are actually kept in all the collections are kept in Java dot util. If you write star, it will everything will come. So we just write array list for this case. Okay. Now I'll just 
comment these things for now. Now, if I have to use this, so if I write, just write student name add add is a function that we can use directly uh, to to assign any value in the data structures. So if I add this, so what will happen in the background is it will create a new it will create an array uh, an object for student name which has an array which contains which can contain all these values. Now suppose the uh, suppose the array is full array is full. So what it will do eventually is once it is full it will create a separate array dynamically and the space it will allocate will be somewhat in the lines of this formula. So suppose you, uh, it has created, uh, created uh, a space of some n value. Now what it will do is it will, it will keep the n and it will add the half of the earlier n that is n by 2 n plus 1. So suppose if the n is 10 and, and the array is filled by 10 elements, we have to add more elements here. So the next element what it will do is it will create a sub next array of the size of 10 plus 5 plus 1 that is 16. So it will create a size of 16 array and then it will it, it will create a separate array and then what uh, it will take the array uh, the earlier array uh, it will take the, all its elements and copy in this new array. So that how is it increasing. So it is a separate kind of thing that is happening in the background that we do not know and we do not need to know as well. Because that's, that has been, that mechanism has been already be sorted out in a more optimized way uh, by the people who are actually maintaining the Java. So, but to get a, a rough idea out of it, so when it creates a, a when it create when it has to increase its own array value uh, uh, in terms of space, it will create a separate array and it will copy the earlier array contents and it will increase its array value. It's all happening in the background. Okay. So let's see what are the things that we can do with this uh, array, array list. So let's let's take integer. So another another way to of uh, initializing array list also is you can call the list interface. You can define the the kind of value it is going to store, and you give some name. Uh, some object name and then you define array list. Now, this thing is valid. The reason is simple because array list is implementing. Okay, so or oh, and I have to import array list as well. I have to import list as well. Okay, Java dot util dot list. Okay, now this this statement is also valid because array list is array list the class is actually implementing the list which is an interface. So it, it is inferring the list as a function and then it is uh, it is taking integer as its value and creating an object called list. Now let's add some values in the in the particular array list. So we can add some value here. So add is a uh, mechanism uh, as a function that you can directly use to ins insert any uh, value in the array list. You don't need to add anything else. And once you do that, uh, if you just write system dot print ln, and if you do list, if you try to run it. Will show directly one two three four. Okay, so add is one of the function that you can utilize uh, to add something in the list. That is one thing. But suppose you want to uh, add a number at a specific position. That given in this one two three four, you will say that I want to add a number called ten in between one and two. So what you have to do is you have to take. Uh, there's another version of the list, uh, sorry, add function where you have to give the index number and the number that you want to provide. In this case, let's say 10. So it's, it's a kind of, if you uh, if you know a more open concept, it's a kind of method overloading which is happening where uh, 
here we are just, if we just pass the number value it will consider it as a uh, consider as a element of the array list but if you give two values first uh, first input parameter it will consider as index of the array list and the second will be the value so if you again add this and run this code you can see that the 10 is been added between 1 and 2 now the reason uh, so this one particular function has uh, reduced a lot of line of code for us because if we have to write a function a uh, function where we have to insert a number between an array we have to first take a number and then we have to do a right shift for all these uh, numbers uh, apart from from wherever the 10 is going to insert in this case 2 3 4 we have to insert them to right and then we have to add 10 in this case also we have to check whether the array size is uh, is, in, uh, is at the limit or not so multiple things we have to check before adding a number into the array but here if we just have list dot add and with particular uh, particular parameters we can do that easily now another thing that we can uh, do with the array list is basically merging the merging the two array so if, let me create a new new array list and I will just add 116 okay so if I have another array and if I have to merge it directly so I just have to use the function called add all and then I have to pass the new and if I just print this if I run this yeah so the new uh, so what we have done is we created a, an, another array and that we added 150 or 160 and then we have merged the, merged the earlier list that we have created and the new list using add all function and then we have printed it so in the console in the bottom we can see that the 150 and 160 that that is a new array we have added them in the back in the end of the uh, the current array okay so that is one thing that we can think of now if we have to remove an element so till now it is adding now to remove an element here we just have to use the function called remove so remove an element if we just say like list dot remove and we give the index value uh, give index value and we, if we try to run it okay let's see so it has if you can see in the fourth line this is the fourth line so we have removed an element which is at index 1 so we have removed and from the uh, from the array array list and then we found that one two three four five this is how it is working now that is one way that is you have to give the index value suppose you don't know the index value then in that case uh, what we can write is remove and then it is integer value of and then we have to pass certain value let's say four so here i'm uh, passing the value of uh, four to better understanding let's write 150 okay and again if we okay just a minute okay. one yeah and if you try to run it so if you don't know the index you can directly uh, search this inter value of integer dot value of and you pass the value and then you can remove the element from the list okay so this is another way that we can use it uh, that is one thing another thing is uh, suppose you want to uh, let's say what we say okay let's say whether we want to check whether it contains uh, it contains uh, a particular element or not so if you have to check that we just have to do list dot contain and then we have to pass the value so let's say 3 
So if we do that and then run it, so it will show the boolean value. So in this case, three is present in the array list. That's why it is showing true. Otherwise, it will show false. Okay. And if you want to clear the list also, you just write list dot clear, and then you just do the, this. This uh, you just print the list, and the end you can see that the array list is empty. So there are multiple functions all are there, but basic functions are basically addition, adding an adding an element in the array, uh, array list, or removing an uh, element. Uh, from the array list, searching whether it's it's present or not, or whether clearing it or merging two arrays. So multiple functions are there that we can you can find it uh, from multiple sources. You can you can try and try and play with them. But these are the basic a uh, basic function which uh, needs to be have in every data structures. So we are adding them uh, in this case. So that is one that is one of the uh, what you say. The Java collection framework that we have used, one of the part of it that is the array list. Now let's see the stack in this case. So, if you, after certain time, you find that there, uh, there's a quite similarity between all the stuff. So the only thing you have to do is you have to create an object of a particular uh, data structure by importing a cert, uh, certain class, and then you have to find the values of like uh, how to. Add, you just know the. You should need to know the function names. That is how to. Add element, how to take out the element, uh, what is the current element, all this stuff we can find it out. So the premise of all the functions will be same. We are just looking at uh, the different ways, uh, different ways of writing uh, through which how we can use them. So for stack, stack is uh, I hope every, uh, everyone knows it. It's a LIFO, It's a it's a last in first out. This it follows this policy that is last in first out. It's like a stack of plate. You can remove the plate only from the top. You can't uh, mm -hmm. remove the plate from the bottom. Same goes for this data structure. So in one of the sessions, we have uh, properly implemented the whole uh, stack uh, stack uh, implementation with all the functions. And we have wrote hundreds of lines of code uh, for that. But here, it just we have to uh, call this particular uh, class. So I will just write that here. I will say animals and I will just say new stack. Okay, and then I have to import the stack as well. So import uh, all the Java collection frameworks are present in java.util. So you just have, if you're using a particular class, it's better to uh, take that particular class as well, uh, particular class name. So, so we have taken this class. So we have created an animal object and uh, which takes in a string as an input. So what we have to do is, if you have to enter some enter uh, some value, we have to use the function called push. So let's write it down. So if animals dot push, and we'll just say, let's say tiger. Okay, I just copy paste this. Okay, let me write something else. Lion, maybe a cat or cheetah. So, as a user or as a developer, our task is just to call this function and write. Uh, insert whatever the values that we have and and just let's print it out system dot out dot print again. you can just say stack stack sorry anyway Okay, so stack contains tiger, lion, cat, cheetah. That's how we are seeing it. But let's see which is the top, uh, a top, uh, which uh, element is actually present. So for that, we just have to write. I'll just print out this. Okay, so there's something called peak function. So if we just write animal dot peak.
and this run it so it will show cheetah so peak function what it will actually do is it will show the top uh, top element in the stack so peak function can do that and if you have to remove something uh, as we know it's last and first out so if we remove something the cheetah will be the first one to remove uh, so let's again see this thing and just copy this okay and if we try to run this okay so we have entered the value as tiger lion cat cheetah and we have seen that uh, the top element was cheetah now after using the pop function we have we can delete an element from stack so once we do that the top of the element will be uh, top element will be removed so the next top element in this case is cat we have that is what we are uh, printing it out and then we print out the whole stack with this tiger lion and cat so so that is that is a nutshell of the stack thing that we have to use again uh, the uh, the framework is quite simple in this case we just have to call the function and there are multiple functions are there with this to stack or any other data structures uh, that we have to look in that particular documentation okay so this is the overview of uh, this is the overview of particular uh, uh, stack class and now we are still and the stack is also is come under it also implements stack implements list now the reason why uh, we have stack implement list is it needs a contiguous memory location we can uh, we we can use it through linked list as well but that will become complicated but in generally when we implement stack it needs a contiguous memory location that the memory element should be placed side by side so that's why the list uh, list come into picture now coming to linked list uh, this is the third thing that we need to do uh, see now linked list is quite interesting because it can be implemented in two ways so we can use q as a class q interface and we can use the list interface we can use the both interfaces uh, the both interfaces provided the linked list aspect now why q interface uh, q interface will go in the next part but uh, to to summarize in short q interface is basically used for the for the priority stuff so q is usually uh, interface is given for uh, if you want if you create a data structure and you want to extract uh, some priority element from that in that scenarios q interface is much you prefer uh, so let's see the both the implementations of q and list interface so let's uh, so if you have to add for uh, list let me start with list interface implementation using list interface okay now if i have to do that i will just copy the earlier stuff what we have done here did here uh, okay copy i i'm just copying the uh, the code which is written for array and then i will modify it here because that's the only thing that we need to uh, check for okay the all the operation that i can do on array i can also do for the li uh, linked list as well array list whatever the operation i'm doing for array list i can do for linked list as well that's why uh, it is impl it, since it contains all, almost all the similar it contains all the same names same functions and all the same functionalities it's just the way it is it is being arranged the concept of linked list as we know it's different it contains pointers and all java doesn't contain pointers but the way it is implemented is little different in the in back so if i have to use it i just need to change only one thing that is here instead of ar uh, array list i just need to write link list and i have to take link list i have to call this function and let me change it here also Okay. Now, whatever. Okay, I will let let me explain the code 
uh, for the uh, for the implementation of list interface because it's quite similar to what we have done for the array list. It's quite almost similar. It's just that we have we call the list link list class compare uh, instead of array list class. So what we are doing is to add an element, we are using add function and we are adding the elements called one two three four. That's what we are doing, and then we are printing out the list. Then what we are doing, uh, we can also in Uh, specify the particular index for which uh, at particular place where we want to insert an element. If we can insert, uh, and then the value of it. If we able to do that, since we able to do that, we can uh, we can modify the linked list as well. So again, we are printing the list. Now this code is basically creating a new linked list and it's adding the value of 150 and 160. Then we are merging them all using call add all. Uh, merging these two uh, linked lists using add all uh, function, and then again we are printing the list. To remove an element from the linked list, we are using the function called remove. And if we want to know uh, the if we just use remove and just pass an value, it will consider that value as an index value. But if we want to pass out the actual uh, element value, pass element value, we you have to use. Either in this case, since it's an integer-based linked list, we have to use in integer dot value of, and then we have to pass the actual value. It will search for that value, and then it will remove that value from the linked list. And we also we can also check in the linked list whether it contains a particular uh, particular value, particular element or not. For that, we have to use list dot contains. So it is all similar to the array dot list. And if we just run it, it will work same as what we had uh, we have done earlier. Now, but for the uh, for the queue implementation, this thing is little differ only mostly in terms of the uh, in terms of the function names that we are using. So since the function name is R concerned, because that's how we we should know and how should add to add in a particular linked list. So let's see the queue implementation, queue interface implementation. I will just. Just comment out the old code of the uh, using list interface. I will do the queue interface now. Okay. Now, in this, uh, if we have to create, uh, if we have to create a object for it, uh, so we can take queue as an interface, and we are passing the type of value it will contain, and then we are giving a queue for better distinction for us, and then. we are calling the class linked list because that is the main thing that we are uh, that's the main data structure data structure on which we are working on and then we have to import the java dot util dot q okay now once we had this If we have to add an element in that linked list using the queue interface, queue interface, so adding an element, you have to use the function name offer. So if we just write queue dot offer and then write some element, that's it. So it will add an element in the particular linked list. And if we and let me add some more numbers here. So let me add twenty four. Twenty six, something like that. Twenty six. Okay. Now, if I just print it out, Q. Yeah. If I print it, uh, if I print the Q, it will show as it is. The offer is actually allowing us to adding an element. That is one thing. Now, uh, to use something, uh, to check. to remove something out of it uh what we have to use is basically a port so let me copy this again and if i use the function call poll since it is a queue it will take out the head or head of the element so let me first show it and then we will discuss what actually happened here okay so in queue queue is basically uh, follow the concept of fifo this is first in first out it follow the concept of fifo that is first in first out uh first in first out 
Okay. So what, how it is differ from a, a particular array list that we have uh, from the li list interface that there we have to specify the index, but here we are not specifying any index. If we if we say like whole, just like how stack works, we also uh, similar for Q also we are taking out uh, it removes element. Uh, from the head of the queue. Okay, so it removes element from the head of the queue. That's the main uh, thing that we should remember. Okay, uh, now the same function uh, we can see the which is the head of the queue now. So for that we have to just use the function call peak. And if we do this. Now 24 is the head. How is it? If we just print out the stuff here. Now it will make sense. So earlier we have uh, 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 the linked list of uh, of array Q implementation as 12, 24, 26. Then we remove the uh, an element. It will remove the element only from the head. That's why it removing 12. Now it remains with 24 and 26. Now from the 24, 26, 24 is the one uh, which is the head right now. That's why when we did the peak, so it will show the head of the head of the queue, head of the link list. In this case. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it for queue. Okay. Now that's it for the queue part here. Uh, it's similar to stack kind of functionality that we have seen. Uh, first is adding an element, removing an element, and checking the head of the queue. So that is one, uh, one aspect of queue implementation. So we in this linked list we have seen two aspects. That is, we, we can implement it using list interface and queue interface. But the difference will come down to how it is actually represented. Here, linked list is actually represented in terms of the array part, and uh, and queue uh, linked list and queue interface represented as a queue part where the element has to be taken out from the head, from the front. Okay, so that's a major difference that we are having here. Now, after this, let's uh, look for priority queue. Now, we can stand some difference in the priority queue. Uh, so, how it is, uh, actually it's, it's one of the most important queues, uh, uh, data structures that we use in multiple things. If you have heard of min heap, man, ma, min heap and max heap, it can be implemented directly through priority queue as well. So if you have to implement the priority queue, uh, we just have to write the class name that is priority queue directly that is coming from the collection framework. We are assigning the integer value for now. Uh, we are creating an object named pq and then we are just again calling just like how we define the object and this symbol in this and I have to import java.util because in java.util only the all the uh, all the java collection frameworks are stored Okay, now, so why it can be do for, uh, it can be do, for, uh, we can use for min heap and max heap, we will just see like that. Just uh, let me write, add some element. So just like Q implementation, we have to use the function called offer. The offer function uh, function will add the elements in the, uh, in the particular priority queue. And let me copy paste it here. We write some certain value, let's say 40, 30, 43, and 24, 21. Okay. Now, if we try to print this thing, and then we just have to do PQ. If we run this, okay. Now, just I just want you to observe the output here for this, for, for a moment. Now, if you can see we, the the order in which we have produced uh, is first we added 12, 40, 43, and 21. 
that's how we add it but when we are printing here it is showing 12 21 43 and 40 seems no relation right because what it the the compiler what is focusing on is that when we define a priority queue by default it will take it will take the least value as priority value least value is a is a is a has a highest priority so by default it is taking like that okay so we will see for the uh, we will see the other case also where we, we will take the highest value as the highest priority but in this case it is taking like that and whatever the rest of elements that we are adding here uh, is is something the way it is arranging in the particular uh, in a particular way so suppose it is actually uh, kind of the queue is actually uh, maybe implementing this in a heap way in a heap action so it is putting uh, the the root of the main heap will be the lowest value so that's why it is putting 12 there and the way it's arranging and the 21, 43, 40 might be in a different way, maybe in a tree structure that we don't know, right? And let's add another, suppose let's add another value here. So if we add tq.offer and let me write 36 or let's take a smaller, smaller value here and if I take it, okay, I have to print it also. Let me print this. Now, if you can see here, uh, I, I added 8, which is lesser value than 12. So, it put the 8 in the first and then it arranges, oh, sorry. Then it arranges the 12, 43, 40, 21 according to its own algorithm that is happening in the background. But the main thing that we, since our focus is priority, it is putting 8 as its stop, right? So that is one thing that we should know about priority queue. It's only our, uh, it focus on the highest priority value. So in this case, the by default, the value highest priority value is the least value. That's why it is giving here. And the next set of uh, the next set of uh, function that we can use is how to remove an element. So if we do that poll, if we add poll, remove an element. So it will remove that uh, that root value that uh, the highest priority value first uh, so if we just printed this out after removing an element we can see that 8 has been removed okay so 8 has been removed and then it comes down to 12 21 43 and 40 now again if we have to see the head of the uh, priority queue we just have to see dot pk dot p The function names are quite similar. I think you can see certain kind of uh, similarity here uh, when it comes to implementation. Uh, they are not, uh, the function names doesn't vary much, but the implementation inside uh, may vary uh, to a certain degree. Okay, so this is one way of uh, do dealing with priority queue. Let me add, let me have another stuff here. So instead of putting least value as highest priority, let's put the highest value as highest priority. So to do this, I just have to write one thing here. So I have to write comparator reverse order. And okay, so what it will do is uh, to put highest value as so we are changing this reverse order that means it is it will take the largest value as the high first as a first priority so if we run the whole same code again you can see that the largest value is put first so 43 43 and then 43 as a top and then when we remove the 43 then 40 became the largest element. so it is working dealing with the 40 so that's how it deals with the uh, that's how the priority queue deals with the element. It is it's not looking for the whole uh, for the whole particular array or the particular uh, queue. It is looking at the only the part, one particular value at the time, which is more highest priority. So this is uh, this is the element of uh, for queue thing. Now let's talk about the D queue. Okay, so array D uh, D queue is basically uh, it's a DQ that means you can enter and remove the elements from the both side 
of the queue okay so this is how so dq is just like that so you can enter the element from the front or you can enter the element from the back or you can uh, take out the element from the front take out the element from the back so that's the concept of dq now uh okay now let's see this uh let's see this implementation here first so again we have to uh array dq and we are create let's create an object first here and adq and new array dq okay i have to import it first here so import java dot util and adq okay so once we have this uh, same adq uh, dot offer offer is used for in all the queue stuff uh, to add an element in the particular uh, in the dq okay but there are other functions as are also is present here so some functions are let me write it down so it is something called as offer first and is something called as offer last and let me give some 100 200 value okay and let me print it first and then let me tell you what does it mean actually adq okay so we add we uh, added the uh, uh, Use, we added 23 in the dq using offer function of offer function then when we put offer first it will include the element in the front of the uh, from the front of the queue okay and if you offer last which is not different from offer they are quite similar it will put the element in the from the last but these functions are not available is uh, functions are not available in queue interface it is actually available in uh, in array dq phase so these offer first and offer last whatever uh, the kind of uh, function we we will see in the dq function which contains first and last it will be contained specifically uh, specifically for the uh, for the array dq so same uh, same function that we can try right now is uh, if you want to see the head of head of the queue so we, we can write multiple functions here okay if we see the head of the queue and if you want to see peak first peak last if you do like this so in this case it shows the head of uh, head of the queue so peak and peak first is not much different shows the first value of the queue is and peak last will show the last value of it so it will just show like this similarly for pole as well if you let me add few more elements before adding something mm, removing some elements from here let me write 50 so and if i do poll similarly poll first wherever you find the poll first and poll last they are actually the function of the array dq not the queue interface that is something we have to you have to remember okay and then again let's okay so till now we have seen we have added two more functions so two more uh, element that is 50 and 45 so it it has been added in the last so after that when i am removing uh, from pole function moving element from pole function 
so it is it will take the head of the it will take the head of the queue so it will remove it remove the it remove the 100 from from the queue then if you put pole first which is same as pole it will remove the head of the queue which is in this case is 20 p but if you put pole pole last I, I can remove 45 that is which is at the put at the last okay and then this is the final uh, 250 is the final led now if you if you if you actually play with this thing you can actually implement stack using uh, array DQ. You can actually implement stack without using uh, without even using the stack interface as well. From this functions itself, you can create a stack from it because everything that you are adding is is, is at the end and removing from the end. So you just have to use the pole last, offer last, uh, offer last function and the peak last function. If you use this, it will work same as uh, the stack. Uh, the stack uh, framework, the collection framework that we have seen today. Okay, so this is a three. Uh, so we have seen the two sets, two interfaces, list and queue, which differs. Uh, so which differs in multiple aspects. Uh, list is actually contiguous, is same concept, same as array, but queue mostly focus on the priority value. That's why priority queue is most used compared to any other uh, data structures in in the in the queues, uh, in the queue interface. Now the third interface, third interface that we use is set and set interface. And the uh, the the specialty of this is every element in the data structure will be unique. Must be unique. It, 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 this is a by default. You can't uh, we, even if you add duplicate element, it can't take duplicate element. It must be unique. So no duplicate elements allowed. Okay. Now, if we have to uh, do, let's first let me write the code quickly because it's almost end of the session here. I will show the difference between all the three things. Uh, uh, so we have remained with hash set, link hash set, and tree set. So I just have to change the name of the uh, object name, and it will work same as it is. Uh, but the output will be quite different. So if I put integer, uh, I will call the set as an interface uh, value, and I will create an object called set, and then I will close the class called hash set. Okay, and then I have to import. Okay, and then I have to impose this also. Import Java dot util dot set. That's it. Now let me add some add some values here. So using add uh, function, we can add some values. So let me add some values here. So let me do some fifty four, twenty one, sixty five. Okay, and let me have this fifty four as well one more time. And let me print it out. System dot set. Okay. Now I want you to observe here the output. If you can see the way I, we have added here the elements, it's not showing in that in that fashion. It is showing some random fashion, and that's that's the particular uh, aspect of set that we have to know. So if you write the same code in your system, also you might get a, some different kind of array. So that reason being, it's not uh, concerned about about the way you added the the priority of uh, the way the or, the or in the order in which you added the element. It just focus upon whether the elements in the set is unique or not. So that's why if I, when I add uh, set 54, uh, the element 54 twice, it's just taking 54 only once. It's not taking more than that. Okay. So that is uh, the the specialty of the set that we have uh, we can see here. Okay. So 
for specifically for hash set it will take in a random fashion we will not know that it will present it will store the elements on the order in which we have defined so this is one thing so if you have to remove an element uh, from uh, from a set you just have to write uh, the remove function and then you have to take an element which is not present okay and if you want to okay let me okay and if you want to see whether it, uh, whether an element contains in a particular thing or not okay so you just have to whether a particular element present in that set or not you just have to see whether it contains or not it will give the value uh, in a bool it will give the output in a boolean value and if you want to check whether the set is empty or not it will also give the answer in boolean value and if you want to check the size of an set also set dot size it will it will give you the size of the set okay let's run this all the stuff one okay so we have uh, we have the earlier we had initially had a five element so once i remove the 54 also you, you just see that it will not take the another 54 that i have taken so it will only consider one 154 for the set so once i removed it so 54 has been removed so that's how the this is the output that we are having and then it again now this contain function we are checking whether 21 present in the set or not since it is present showing true when the set is empty no it's not empty that's why it's showing false and since the number of elements in the set is 4 that's why it's showing the size of the element is 4 now if you want to clear a set you can just write set dot clear and if we just print the set it will show an empty set okay so this is one aspect of uh, this is one of the aspect of the hash set that we are looking at now if we run the same code for two different uh, other classes that is linked hash set and tree set we will see the difference and the difference are not that major it's quite different uh, major difference at the same time easy to understand so for the linked hash set let me compile it and just show you the difference directly so if i just instead of this if i just add linked hash set uh, and I import the value not added okay. it has been added okay nice okay so if i just run it here now the difference between the earlier hash set and linked hash set is it is preserving the order in which uh, i am entering the element in the particular set so like 32 5 254 21 65 it is maintaining that but it keeping the set uh, properties also same that is it is distinct it will be distinct so that the property it is keep on uh, is keeping it's maintaining that but the order it in which it has been kept is same the rest of the the rest of the function that is remove contains is empty size is quite same but the way it has been presented in the link has set is something similar to the how we put in array that is it kept maintain the order in which we have uh, kept the array right in the on the order in which we have entered so link hash set will imp, uh, will maintain that now for the tree has set if we just change the tree has set here and let's import it it's not imported okay let me write import java dot util dot tree set okay now if if i run this also now the difference between hash set link hash and tree set tree set is it will give you the uh, it will of uh, it will arrange the set in a ascending order or in a sorted order because it is making a binary tree in the back in the back end and it is presenting that in in order fashion that's why so in the set in the set particular set uh, interface when you have three classes that hash set link hash set and tree set the way it has been represented is quite different in hash set it is random in link hash set it was in order the way in which we enter the same 
way it is showing us but for the tree set it is showing us in a sorted order okay so that is the main difference between the three classes that we are looking at so in a nutshell uh, and the rest of the functions of the set will be same just like how we have seen for queues and uh, we have seen for the list interface uh, the, uh, the, the functions will be same uh, the properties will differ based on the data structure that we are implementing there in the background but here we can see that we just have to add a function we just have to call one function and we have to just have to use it to implement our particular data structure so that's the beauty of that's the beauty of that uh, collection framework here okay so so in nutshell what we have seen is we have seen uh, our overview of the java collection framework in which we have seen uh, three interfaces basically list set and queue there are other interfaces as well, as well but in terms of data structures this since this course is more focused on that it contains uh, we are focusing on this um, popular uh, three interfaces that is list set and queue within each uh, interfaces we uh, we have we have uh, looked at the three classes which implements this interfaces for list it is array list link list and stack for set it's hash set link set and reset and the for queue uh, it's link list and propriety so that's the overall of the today's session uh, yeah so if you have any question we can uh, you can ask me and i will stop the recording now